everyone loves water, right? Playing in it in all of its varied forms. And that's why I've made it the topic of today's video. And we're gonna look at a simple way you can measure your own soil's moisture content. Now I have a friend who loves playing golf. And whenever he's having a bad game, for whatever reason, it's usually never his fault. And this is because, well, not just because he's the type of person that likes playing golf, but it's down to his emotional connection with the environment he's in and the ground that he's walking on. Now, anyone who likes playing golf will know that the feel of the green is directly linked to how fast that surface plays, how quickly the ball will run over the surface. And one of the reasons for this, one of the clever tricks that green keepers use is controlling the amount of water in the soil. And they do this for a couple of reasons. Adding water obviously helps promote grass growth. It increases biological activity, but running it a little bit drier can actually help minimize the potential for things like disease. And soil moisture content is incredibly important, which is why it's one of the topics of an earlier video where I looked at how soil microbiology can change throughout the year and one of the reasons for that, which is moisture. You can check that video, it's this one here. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, typically in a constructed soil, like a golf green, which is made up mainly of sand, it can be incredibly difficult to retain moisture because of the percolation, the flow of water through that surface. And that's down to the aggregate size and actually, the soil type, the percentage of sand silt clay can have a direct bearing on the capacity or the ability of a soil to hold onto water, which is why organic matter is so vital in helping to regulate that process, building up not just carbon reserves, but helping to retain soil moisture at key times of year. Again, I made another video on the importance of soil organic matter very early days, I'll leave a link to this one in the description below as well. Now we've all seen fields like this, covered in water, anaerobic, this is not a good place to be. And often these conditions arise due to either bad management practices or other factors out of control, not great. The other end of the spectrum, of course, is a situation like this, a complete desert where the soil is completely devoid of life. It is a microbial graveyard and very difficult to grow in. So soil moisture is crucial and the impacts of getting it wrong either way are huge. But how do you know how much is enough? How could you find out your range for your own soil? And more to the point, how would you even go about measuring the soil moisture content of your soil at any particular time? Well, lucky for you, that is the topic of today's video. I'm gonna show you a simple way to test your soil moisture content yourself. So before we get into the how, let's talk very quickly about why you might want to check your own soil moisture content. So I'm gonna give you three reasons very quickly why you should be thinking about testing your soil moisture. Reason number one is to understand the full range of moisture content in your soil throughout the year. So looking at the minimum moisture and the maximum at key times. Reason number two is to fully understand what is happening in your soil throughout the year. And this could be on a much greater frequency than just the maximum and minimum. We're talking on a monthly basis. Soil is dynamic. When conditions change, things in the soil, the interactions between those microbes also change things. Now, my third and final reason, possibly one of the most important of the three, is to understand the effects of changes that you make. This could relate to the addition of organic matter, wood chip, or some other type of mulch, which 
physically impact the soil very quickly and have a direct impact on the moisture content of that soil. It could well be that your plants have enough moisture to keep them ticking over at a particular point in time, but actually the soil itself is just a little bit too dry to have all of those organisms stimulated working away to generate the foods that your plant need. So unless you know what is happening in the soil, unless you know how much moisture is there, you can't do anything about it. So why measure? Ultimately, it can affect your irrigation or watering regime and management practices. So with all of that said, let's have a look at how you actually go about measuring your soil moisture. Now in the laboratory, it's a fairly straightforward process. It's one of the simplest things that we do. We take a pan, we put it on an incredibly accurate scale. This goes to thousandths of grams and we measure the weight of the tray itself before we add the soil to that. And then we put it into a scientific oven which runs at a set temperature for a degree of time before we take the soil out and weigh it again. Now with all the measurements that we've collected along the way, we can subtract the weight of the tray from the end weight, from the start weight, and we know that the change in mass, the grams difference, relates directly to how much moisture was in that soil. But how do you go about doing this in your own home? Well, the great thing about this process is despite most people not having their own laboratory, we can actually emulate the process quite easily in a kitchen because most of the pieces of equipment and materials that we need are already readily available. So that means we're gonna need an oven which will preheat to around 100 degrees centigrade. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, I'll pop that on the screen somewhere up here. We then need our balance, our scales that we would use for measuring things out when we're baking. We need some form of pan that is ideally oven proof. If not, we'll have to make something out of tin foil and put it on a heat proof tray. And then we need our soil sample and a pen and paper to jot everything down. Now, once we have everything ready, we're just going to copy that process. We'll get our little weigh tray ready. We will then put this onto our balance and we will record the value. Once we've done this, we won't bother to tear the scales, we won't reset the weight of the pan. Reason for that is when we take the pan with the dry soil out of the oven, we're gonna to have to weigh the whole thing, including the pan, so we'll just subtract that at the end. So once we have our pan ready and weighed, we are then going to weighing somewhere between 20 and 30 grams, a little bit more because that allows for a slightly higher margin for error and the bigger the numbers, the more accurate the end result is likely to be. So now that we've got our soil on the pan, something between 20 and 30 grams, we've written that measurement down exactly to every digit that's displayed on the scale. So we're gonna pop it in the oven for at least 12 hours. And when we take the sample out, we're gonna pop it straight onto the scales as quickly as possible and write the result down next to our other numbers. Now to calculate the moisture content, it's very simple. I'll pop the equation on the screen. I say equation, it's really, really simple. All we need to do is to subtract the weight of the pan, our weigh dish, from the sample at the start and at the end and we have the wet weight of the soil and the dry weight of the soil left. Now we subtract one from the other, which gives us the weight loss, and we stick those numbers here, and it gives us our percentage soil moisture content. Very straightforward process. If you have problems, hit me up in the comments below. Couple of points I would say in doing this, 
when you collect your soil sample, try and filter out as many of the stones as you can. Obviously, stones don't constitute soil. Yes, you might have more stony soil, which is kind of representative of the area you're growing in. However, we don't want to weigh those stones because they're not actually going to lose any moisture. So pick out all the stones that you can. Also, pick out any chunky, visible plant residues and organic matter. Again, those tissues will have moisture locked up within them, so they're not soil. They will lose mass when they go through that drying process as well. So try and kind of pick and filter your soil sample as best you can before you start the process. So there we go. That is how you measure your own soil moisture content. I hope you could follow it. If you have problems, do shoot me an email or put something in the messages below this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe give it a like. Follow the channel if you like stuff like this that shows you how to kind of do things with soil that ultimately help you grow healthier, tastier plants and crops. And until the next video, goodbye.